I will make the motion to approve the agenda with the addition of votes on the two presentations. Thank you. Thank you. Need a second. Just a minute. It's happy to see Mr. Overbay in the audience. Is no, I, uh, I, it public I, comments? Was tonight the night for the agenda, or is it public comments? It would be public. He's going to be on public comment. Okay. I just wanted to make sure. Yeah. I didn't want you to waste a trip. He'll be on public comment. Clarification. Go ahead. Commissioner John Irwin, you, you made the motion with votes on two. Uh, the two public hearings. Uh, three public hearings, excuse me. Yeah. On the motion. And we have the motion. We need a second. Second. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Raise your hand. Motion carries 4-0. <coughs> motion on the uh, minutes that were presented we've had our packet for a few days uh, there again i need a motion in a second so moved second got a motion in a second questions discussion all those in favor raise your hand four oh now we go to a public hearing and we're going to have three separate public hearings and in those public hearings, we'll have three separate votes, correct? Okay, kid. take the floor. First public hearing will be for the fiscal year 24 5311 CTP administration grant for Allegheny in motion. This helps with two and a half full-time salaries, fringe benefits, marketing, and drug and alcohol testing. The total amount of this grant is $114,829 with $17,225 being local match. Wish to approve, Mr. Chair. Need a second. One minute. No, it's still a public hearing. Oh, well, We've got to close it first. Uh, any, any questions? None. I thought that I asked if you come or present the hearing. Do you want me to read the number? You need to open the public hearing. Yes. Okay. For the public hearing, I will go ahead and read the title for it, and that will open the public hearing. It's for AIM 5311 administrative grant and if you you went ahead and explained it already does that satisfy our book or notes public comment on it is there any comment from anybody in the public hearing none i will go ahead and close the public hearing on the uh, administrative grant 5311 and at this time, we need a motion and a second to approve the uh, first public hearing. So move, sir. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. Are there any questions? All those in favor, signify by raising their hand. Any opposed, raise your hand. <clears throat> Carries 4 0. Now we go to public. I'll open public hearing for AIM 5311 capital grant and if you go ahead and explain that grant this grant is for two replacement raised roof fans one replacement lift van one replacement minivan logos for all four a replacement commute computer system and two new desks and all of these vehicles have met useful life and that was presented to us on page five of our Allegheny in motions. Are there any questions or concerns from the public about this uh, 
about this grant application. Hearing none, seeing nobody uh, raising their hand, I would move to have close the public hearing. Now I would move to have a motion and a second to approve capital grant. So moved. Second. Have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Any opposed, likewise. That motion carries 4-0. Now, public hearing AIM 5310, Elderly and Disabled Operating Grant. I open this public hearing to discuss that grant. Tiffany, if you go ahead. This grant allows the elderly and or disabled to travel a dollar per stop for in-town transportation. The total amount of this grant is for 28,000 with a local match of 14,000. This is just in town grant. Yes, sir. Any questions from the public? Any comments from the public? Hearing none, seeing nobody's hand, I will go ahead and close the public hearing for the 5310 elderly and disabled operating grant. I would request a uh, motion and a second to approve. Motion to close public hearing. Need a motion to approve the grant. And approve it. And a second. Second. Have a motion and a second. All those in favor, raise your hand. Any opposed, the same. Motion carries 4-0. You're in business. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your time. <coughs> All the uh, those are <coughs> public hearings, all of them been opened and closed. We approved three. Next is public comments from the, uh, any citizen would like to say anything to the board for roughly three minutes. Now's your time. I believe we have one person. And state your name. Robert Overby, I know most of you couple of you I don't. I'm a senior vice commandant, Marine Corps League here in Sparta, member of the VFW for 55 years, and uh, chairman of the Veterans Advisory Committee. I'm here with a couple of gripes, and I'd like to, if I have time, I'd like to read uh, something to you all about a condition that everyone needs to be aware of. I wasn't aware of it until just recently, and it's a life-threatening situation. Uh, I'll try to read this if I can. I've got several things in here. My appearance here tonight is not about me. A couple of weeks ago, I had to take my wife to the emergency room at Allegheny Hospital. I thought that she had had a stroke as she was confused and disoriented. The doctors started tests and they thought that she had had a heart attack and started monitoring her condition as such. They uh, tried to find a room in a cardiac unit at the Baptist Hospital or Forsyth, no rooms available. They did this for two days to no avail. My wife's condition continued to deteriorate. Her vital signs were all over the place. Our daughter suggested that the hospital contact CMC or Presbyterian in Charlotte, at which time we were informed that ambulance transport would be a problem, as our local ambulance service did not transport to Charlotte. A room was available in the cardiac unit at Presbyterian in Charlotte. We were able to have an ambulance dispatched from Presbyterian in Charlotte to effect the transport. A three-man crew, two and a half hours up, two and a half hours back. Our daughter and I followed the ambulance back to Charlotte, and as we were leaving Sparta, as we passed the Italian-American restaurant, lo and behold, what, would, what did we see but two ambulances sitting in the parking lot, where the crews were apparently inside enjoying a nice, leisurely supper. I thought that the latest game plan was to transport critical patients with our ambulances and have the local reserve rescue squads back them up until the ambulances could get back to to the county. 
apparently not in my wife's case. When a person has a stroke or heart attack, time is of the essence. Critical patients do not have the luxury of lying in our hospital for two or three days waiting to get to in intensive care for the med medical treatment that they need to survive. Foot dragging and pussyfooting around can cost lives. Time clock is ticking. From my personal experience, Baptist and Forsyth render exemplary service if you can just get a room and get in for the treatment. But it seems that the availability of rooms is uh, the old standby that no rooms are available. I don't think it's the rooms that's a problem. I think it's the medical staff that's a problem. They've shot themselves in the foot with the stupid mistakes that they've made during this pandemic the Chinese COVID-19 and we're all now paying the price for their stupidity. When a person is critically ill, something has to be done. Common sense comes into play very quickly. It is just a matter of time till so the waiting game will be played once too often and someone will die needlessly because of it. Critical, critical questions will be raised, such as, well, if a room wasn't available at Baptist or Forsyth, wasn't there other hospitals providing the necessary care to save this person's life? Why wasn't the patient transported to that hospital? Why wasn't the ambulance dispatched? Who is in charge of ambulance dispatch? Among the conditions that my wife had, the Allegheny Hospital doctors diagnosed heart, heart attack, a UTI, and a kidney stone. When she arrived at Presbyterian, doctors began all kinds of tests and found that she had sepsis. They installed a stent around the kidney stone for kidney drainage and began massive doses of antibiotics. Could not crush the kidney stone, she still has it, and they can't crush it until the sepsis is totally cleared up. She is back at home now and she's recovering, but it's gonna be a slow process. And it's my firm belief, had I not got her to Presbyterian when I did, she'd be dead. I don't know if any of y'all are familiar with sepsis, but if I've got time, I'll read this. This is from the Center for Disease Control. I've researched it. What is sepsis? Anyone can get an infection, and almost any infection, including COVID-19, can lead to sepsis in a typical year. At least 1.7 million adults in America develop sepsis. At least 350,000 adults who develop sepsis die during the hospitalization or are discharged to hospice. One in three people who dies in a hospital had sepsis during that hospitalization. Sepsis, or the infection causing sepsis, starts before a patient goes to the hospital in nearly 87% of the cases. Sepsis is the body's extreme response to an infection. It is a life-threatening medical emergency. Sepsis happens when an infection you already have triggers a chain reaction throughout your body. Infections that lead to sepsis most often start in the lung, urinary tract, skin, or gastrointestinal tract. Without timely treatment, sepsis can rapidly lead to tissue damage, organ failure, and death. What causes sepsis? Infections can put you or your loved one at risk for sepsis. When germs get into a person's body, they can cause an infection. If you don't stop that infection, it can cause sepsis. Bacterial infections cause most cases of sepsis. Sepsis can also be a result of other infections, including viral infections, such as COVID-19 or influ influenza or fungal infections. Who is at risk? Adults 65 and older, that's us people with weakened immune systems, people with chronic medical conditions such as diabetes, lung disease, cancer, or kidney disease, and people who have formerly survived sepsis, people with recent severe illness or hospitalization, and children younger than one. What are the signs of sepsis? A person with sepsis might have one or more of the following signs or symptoms. Heart rate or weak pulse, she had that. Confusion and disorientation, she had that. She was fortunate she didn't have extreme pain and discomfort. 
but she had fever, shivering, and feeling very cold. Shortness of breath, she had that. Clammy or sweaty skin, she had that. But this is something that everybody needs to consider. Sepsis is a medical emergency. If you or a loved one has an infection that's not getting better or is getting worse, act fast. Get medical care immediately. With fast recognition and treatment, most people survive. Treatment requires urgent medical care, usually in an intensive care unit in a hospital, which includes careful monitoring of vital signs and often antibiotics. You can bet that you're going to get antibiotics and plenty of them if you're lucky. But it might be something that all of you wants to consider and the people in Allegheny County, this, this can affect anybody. That's all I have. Okay, thank you, Mr. Overman. Okay. Thank you, appreciate that. Uh, anyone else for public comments? Seeing none, I'll go ahead and close the public comments for now. We'll move on to uh, general business. Uh, fairgrounds sign advertising cost. This will be for information only. Uh, Randy Murphy, uh, Recreation Director. Thank. Come on up. Hello. Um, Firegrounds committee met a couple of weeks ago, and I get several calls a month probably on advertising on the sign, but we've never really pinpointed a price as far as rent goes. The only thing that I can find is a combo, which is at the sign and down at the grandstand. Um, what we had discussed is um, doing a $200, $200 a month rental, which would go from the first to the last day of the month. And regardless when you rent it, if you rented it on the 12th, it's still not going to go back on there until the first, and then that way we can make sure everything comes off on the last day of the, of the month. And um, we can put multiple um, advertisements on this board we can set time limits on when it rotates and all also um, so that people that does advertise and the people coming down the road can uh, read the advertisements. The, uh, I think this will be put on the agenda for <coughs> the consideration for the mid-month meeting. Uh, I think there are several questions that need to be answered. How long will one, if three or four people want to advertise in a 24-hour period, will they be on the billboard for a minute or two minutes? They rotate. How does well, that work? One, one thing you got to consider, that speed limit's 55 miles an hour through there. So um, you got two options. You can slow it down so whoever's coming by there can actually see that or speed it up so that, uh, you know, if you got numerous cars, because like I said, at 55 miles an hour um, in your Woody's, uh, it doesn't take you long to get past that sign. So, I mean, that's just a, uh, um, I guess, something we'd have to uh, investigate a little bit to see what would be a good time frame of before the sign uh, cycles through to the next advertisement. I know that when the uh, when the sign project started, uh, we expected, I think, a lot of advertising. And how, how much have you had so far? And the only advertisement we do really right now is if you um, went to Black Building and you're going to have, like, Arts Council has, has a program, um, part of the rental, you will get an advertisement on that board. Uh, that's really the only thing we're, we're doing, but, you know, I've had uh, several folks that um, wanting to advertise, but like I said, we've never had a set price on to do just the digital sign. It's this amount of money. Um, and when we met with the Firegrounds Committee, that's what we had uh, discussed and came up with. 
When's your next fairground committee meeting? The uh, next week. Do, uh, do you think that you can come up with some more information as to timing, how you're going to do that? Uh, is it going to cost a dollar a minute, or how's the breakdown going to work for the advertiser? Um, well, I mean, as far as the breakdown goes, it's a set price, but um, I mean, uh, the only thing that I see that could cause a problem is if you've got five advertisements and you're traveling into town from Twin Oaks, you know, you're going to be lucky to see two advertisements at 55 miles an hour. But you may catch the other two as you're going back home towards Twin Oaks. Um, uh, I have played with the time setting because I have been told that uh, some of the advertisements we've had on there either wasn't last long enough or was cycling too fast. Um, and I think I've got it at um, three minutes now every three minutes it cycles and so far that's I think has uh, uh, done a good job on what we have been doing so far. Tom, do you have any questions? Uh, no, not really. I, you know, I would like to see a, a an opportunity for uh, a citizen to be able to purchase a one-day advertisement happy birthday to my wife, happy anniversary, something like this, to say $25 a day, a little bit. I uh, believe that would be utilized more. Uh, it be able to bring in some money, but uh, other than that, uh, that's my only thoughts on it, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Greg, do you have any comments, questions? Is, is anybody going to be able to advertise on this? Somebody running for county commissioner can advertise on it. So anybody can advertise on it. <laughs> we had discussed this uh, when the last election was, and we felt like it was uh, um, probably best to stay out of the political end <laughs> on it. And um, uh, as a uh, committee, uh, fairgrounds committee, um, they did take a vote on that. And, uh, and voted that down um, at that time. So, so any business or anything can advertise? Any business? No matter what type of business. No matter what kind of business. Uh, business, personal. As long as it's legal. <laughs> yeah, as long as it's legal. <laughs> um, Even Fords can advertise. A lot of people like to walk, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, this... Uh, a uh, question that Bob had as far as the time limit, it may be something once we start selling some advertisements that we have to play with to to find what the best niche is for our sign. Anything else, Greg? Jimmy? Who, who does that money go to? Does it go to the fairgrounds committee? Fairgrounds. And that money is used for... Everything from putting gravel down to uh, whatever we need at the fairgrounds. Okay. Okay. I, I would, if you could uh, maybe give us a, a better breakdown either at the mid-month meeting or our February meeting, and we put that on, if that's agreeable, put it on the board for action. That gives us the time to ask some questions. And uh, is that a Consensus is that good with you, John? Greg, Jimmy. So we'll put it on. You let us know if you be prepared for the mid month, or if you want to move it to the first of February meeting. That should be fine. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, item two is the uh, SCIF pool project ordinance. April Ham. And this will require a vote, and number three will require a vote. So, what you have before you is the project ordinance for the state capital investment funds. That's what SCIF stands for, 
for the pool project. The expenditures are broke down um, exactly how they were submitted with scope of work to the state. And then you have the revenues at the bottom. This will be Fund 31 is what it will be in a separate fund. Carter, do you have anything to add to this part? Yes, sir. Uh, just to explain the breakdown, April and I sat down and talked about how the division of the expenditures could be identified and those are listed accordingly. So those are those are more guidelines than they are anything, but it, it's an accurate estimate of what we feel the funds would go towards. We will be able to move those funds around as needed. We just had to give them an estimate of what we thought the 400000 was going to be used for. Okay. On question? Uh, not a question, just a, for the benefit of the public. This money was money that Senator Deanna Ballard was able to secure from the state of North Carolina uh, for our pool project. So there will not be any county funds involved with this. So there's 400000 for what I call administrative 400000 to go towards the construction of the pool. And unfortunately, Deanna failed to get through the uh, primary. She's done a tremendous amount for this uh, county. She's always available when any of us commissioners have called. She's gotten right back. It's a shame that she's no longer in our, able to serve us. But uh, just to let you know, this is money that she procured from the state of North Carolina. And the first thing that you think of is, well, we all pay taxes. Well, if this money hadn't come to Allegheny, I guarantee you it would have gone somewhere else. So thank you, Deanna. It all drawn. That's it. Thank you. Brad, hear me comments? <clears throat> and so we have a, uh, we're required to vote on this to be able to uh, get a hold of these funds. So, motion to approve, Mr. Chair. And uh, need second. a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Are there any further discussion? All those in favor, raise your hand. All those opposed, likewise, that carries 4-0. Um, Shell is not here tonight. Oh, you were a no vote. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. 3-1. Thank you. And Michelle is not here tonight. She's uh, at home recovering from some uh, minor surgery, and we wish her the best. Um, we need, uh, I guess, Michael, if you would like to talk about the RFQ and the process, uh, how we go about applying for that part, advertising. <coughs> sure. Um, it, for, for several meetings now, there's been discussions about the potential for looking at building a new swimming pool and the common response has been let's wait until we get the money to proceed and we've now received that money you just approved the ordinance allowing for such so in anticipation of, of moving forward with the project the Commissioners are considering tonight a request for qualifications from engineering firms to begin the process of looking for a firm to provide a study to the county of various sites for a potential pool for the construction costs, for the logistics, for the infrastructure, for all the costs associated with it. What the request, what the RFQ uh, request tonight is, is to be able to provide that RFQ, solicit for engineering firms to provide their qualifications, set a deadline, and I would recommend setting a, a deadline for submissions to be a 45-day window. We receive those back 
we review those accordingly. We go through the proper ranking system that identifies uh, the, the firms in which we're interested in interviewing. We select one. We begin negotiating with that firm for exactly what they anticipate the cost of their services, what we look for in the scope of the study. They provide such, and then once we get that completed analysis, that then gives the Board of Commissioners a better feel for what the project would entail, both in a logistical and a financial need, and then a determination on how we move forward, or even if we move forward at that point, is then determined. So I would ask that the Board consider approving a request for qualifications and to allow me to get that out over the next couple of weeks and set the timetable moving forward to coincide accordingly. And the, the 45 days will start when you send it out? Yes, sir. Okay. And you think you can have that done in the next two weeks? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, John, any questions? No, thank you. Greg, any questions? Kenny? No. Okay. No. Uh, need a motion in a second to uh, go ahead and approve the request for site evaluation of the RFQ for the pool site. Uh, motion to approve um, RFQ approval. Is that what we're doing? We're not really doing site evaluation now. We're, we're just soliciting for qualifications. Yeah, we're just okay. okay. Well, second, Mr. Chair. We have a we have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? All those in favor, raise your hand. All those opposed, it's a three o three one vote. Thank you. Now we come to uh, county manager comments. Members of the board, I I don't have but uh, actually one comment tonight. And that is to identify that uh, I'm sure most of you and, and some of the public are familiar that we had some loader issues over the transfer facility over the last <coughs> couple of days. And as of 1 o'clock today, those loader issues are resolved. So hopefully uh, that's taken care of and passed us. There's still a couple of items that we need to replace, but they are going, and, and we do have the proper replacements coming. So that's the only comment that I have tonight. The uh, question, how long is our contract with that, uh, with the orange loader? <laughs> um, how many more years? I believe there's another year and a half on it, but I can I can let you know that at your next months. meeting. I'm sure it's only if it rolls down the hill or something. <laughs> well, we've considered fire insurance, and, uh, but uh, th that that has been an ongoing problem since the, I guess since the very beginning. But the way the contract was written, we we were stuck with it. And one thing about contracts now, uh, our legal counsel has to sign off on all contracts. That the county enters into, and hopefully we won't run up against a problem like this and two or three other problems that we've had in the past. But anything else? Yes, sir. Other? Any comments? Uh, go to uh, the commissioner comments. Start with John. Well, uh, for anybody ask, we check. Lemon law does not apply on that loader. <laughs> uh, so good news. <clears throat> the North Carolina Military Veterans Hall of Fame in Charlotte, North Carolina, has received a nomination for Thomas Jefferson Jones, native of Allegheny County. Thomas Jefferson Jones whose father was the first elected sheriff in Allegheny County, who was wounded four times during the War of Northern Aggression, entered the Marine Corps in 1914. 
started shooting on the Marine Corps rifle and pistol team in 1919. Over the course of his career, he won or placed in the top three in 135 matches. He holds the record for the 300-yard line bullseyes, consecutive bullseyes set in 19 and 33 with a Springfield 1903 rifle. 135 consecutive bullseyes until it got too dark and he dropped out with a type 4. In 1936, 55 consecutive bullseyes at 1,100 yards. It's a record. He was one of the first six master gunnery <coughs> sergeants selected for the United States Marine Corps, and this was a special rank designation uh, at that time. Uh, you only went up to E-8. Now the master gunnery sergeant rank is the E-9, but it was a special rank back then of which only six Marines held it. His scholarship uh, at the Marine Military Academy, uh, the scholarship was established there. He was distinguished with the rifle and the pistol and won the President's 100 twice. He went up against the top 100 marksmen in the world. And he was born in Scottsville. Quite a record. Hopefully he will be nominated. That's all I have, Mr. Chair. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, John. Brad? Bob, I was just wondering what that swimming pool to Avery County you went and looked at, how much it cost them to build that. That was two years ago, and it was roughly $3 million. Okay. That's all I got. Let me? Um, a couple notes, and, of course, uh, the pool thing that we keep talking about, but I know we're – we're into this, but um, I have been keeping up with it actually for the last few months that y'all been sort of talking about it and did your presentation, which I think y'all did a great job with. Um, no, is you know, as far as support and everything, it's premature, but the thing I've been thinking about as far as um, as I have grandchildren and you know, maybe I get old enough to have great grandchildren. I don't know, but but Why are anyway. you looking at me? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It may have something to do with the hair. <laughs> but anyway, um, my point is, is there is some things you know in the county that I think that can be a, a, a very a something of good service to the to the community. And it's when you when you have something like that, it's a possibility that that it can bring things more than just I understand you get a swimming pool it's going to be cost you're never going to make money to uh, support it so you have to be willing to commit once you get to that place after you get one built but my point is there's a lot of things that's lacking in this day and time of young people and it is community things that they do together which they don't do a lot of we don't have a lot of things like that here um, and get them away from the, all the electronics and all maybe some of the other things. But the other thing is important is the, the community. Um, so one of the things that I remember as a young person when we did have the pool, which was smaller, was getting together with our buddies, you know, or when I was a kid. And that's something that we're lacking here, I think. And I think it's something, it's one of those things that's worth working towards I don't think, you know, if you got into the bottom and you said, the only way we're going to make this happen, we're going to have to borrow a bunch of money, then, you know, I, I, that's where I, that's where I, you know, you have to make that decision to worry. Is it worth it to borrow money? And, you know, it's hard to put a worth on it when you talk about it from that point of view. But I do think there's things, there's possibilities out there if we're willing to work towards that once we get a plan together to see what specifics we need and then we can go to the different people, you know, 
know, whether we need help try to get it from the state, uh, whether we go to the individuals to see if fundraising is a possibility, but all in all, I think it is something worth working towards to, to, to better our community, have something. I, I, for instance, you know, the swimming lessons. We have young people all through the county has to go to Elkin or somewhere else and, you know, and we, during the summer. So there's lots of different things that I know as personal, from a personal level that, that could be very helpful, beneficial from that. So, you know, like I said, we'll, we'll see where this takes us to, our direction on that. And then the other thing was a sort of an off topic thing, but <laughs> one, it's something that goes back to my practical way of thinking. Um, and John brought it up about the school board. And I look forward because I'm on the committee, I think with you probably. Yes. With working w with the school board in a lot of different areas, but one of the things is, I, my first thoughts is the 47 million that they may, that they have coming to them. <coughs> I, my thing is they need to spend it wisely. Um, and, and that is in taking into account of all the possibilities, like John said, of overages. And, and I can't tell them how to do that. But at the same time, if we can get it across to them, like, okay, you got this amount of money. To begin with, from a builder standpoint, I understand, like, you know, this money has to be spent for a new school or semi-new school. But I, they have a building there that, from my point of view, you know, of course, you can't, may not get money for remodeling and stuff, but, you know, we graduated 86 people last year, and our population in that younger part is not going up, so it doesn't make sense to me to build new schools when, I understand, yeah, it may, it's new, it's uh, flashy, and ever, all that good stuff, it's great, but, and it's good if they can take this money and then build a new school, and it's great, but if they don't do it wisely and they don't do it smart and then they do have to come back to us for as john says three to five million dollars i'm gonna have a problem with that i mean i personally i mean because um it's it's a building to me it could be it could be yeah, which, <laughs> yeah yeah so and and that part and they may be thinking this and this is great and you know when we start having these conversations with dr beasley and that's great, but we are sure not going to give them a blank check on that for sure. But anyway, it was it's sort of off subject, but at the same time, I know there's a lot that they'll get the right people to do the different things. But in building, I also know that if they don't get the right consultings and engineering, engineering costs crazy. I mean, somebody and, and you get an engineer and you have to do that in commercial they cost what you charge what they charge and then they cost you they because they overkill everything it costs so much more but anyway just it's like i said it's not doesn't have anything to do with just the comment that john made but it is going to be coming up you know we are going to have to deal with it eventually that's my thoughts thank you uh, i would just like to say what a Nice Christmas, I think, a lot of people had. It was a very cold Christmas, uh, especially a few days after that. I think the, the county buildings uh, this year, we had very little little damage compared to last year. Uh, I know it's been hard on the animals outside and hard on the people that had to get out and feed the animals and take care of them. And I appreciate all the farmers in the county for the hard work that they do. Uh, our budget cycle is going to start here in probably a month or so, maybe even a little quicker. And we have a lot, lot of potential, not problems, but a lot of potential cost coming towards us. And I think John mentioned a lot of those earlier, and Timmy has also. Uh, I think that uh, right now we're in a better position than we have been in the past. That does not mean that we're going out on a spending spree. 
and just start throwing money here and there. Uh, now that we're off the state watch list, I want to be sure we stay off of it. And I think that uh, this board is, is, a, is a good board, is a conservative board. We have things we have to take care of. Uh, there's maintenance on things that has to be done. And we have a great set of employees in this county. I think we're up to 131 or two, something, 134. And I think we have a great workforce in all of our departments. Uh, I just look forward to, uh, to the budget cycle starting. And I pledge, and I know Timmy does, that we're going to keep everybody informed uh, the whole time. There's no secrets in the, in the finance committee. It's, uh, it's a process that's, uh, that's put us in a pretty good position with the state. And I have Michael to thank. I have finance department, April, Drew. You know, you do, I hate saying one person's name because you leave somebody out. But I think overall, all of our departments realized that we had to pull back from where, what we were doing, how we were spending. The county commissioners realized that, and I hope it continues uh, for this next budget cycle. And with that being said, uh, I have a. Um, yeah, he said. Get to recognize Greg. He's already talking. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 It is. Short and sweet. Yeah. We've got to go into a closed session of the request for closed session pursuant to GS 143 318 11 11 A 6. So I would move that we. Uh, Uh, to include April and, and to include April and Linda, and Linda Edwards and, and Linda in, in our closed session. Uh, with that being said, so moved. we going to stay here or go in there. We'll stay here, so we'll excuse the the public. Thank you.